As we cross the threshold into a new year, ask the Lord to give you a new beginning of obedience to Him. Do you make New Year's resolutions? In some way, we all make resolutions in life. Uh, you may call them that, you may call them something else, but we all have moments uh, where we come to ourselves and we make determinations about certain things. Uh, recently, I was talking to a man who said, I always start the year with a certain resolution and somewhere I always give it up. Well, I think that's true of so many of us. Uh, Peter understood that. He made some resolutions. And from him, we learn that resolutions are not enough. No matter how good they are, no matter how sincere they are. I'm in Matthew chapter 26 today where Peter looks at the Lord and says in verse 33, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee that this night, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. And yet, when you come down just a few verses, you find that Peter is indeed offended. He curses and swears and said he doesn't know the man. And all the rest of the disciples, let's not pick on Peter alone, all the rest of the disciples will forsake him and flee. Now, they all made great promises, great resolutions. He said never, but he failed that very night. He said always, but he couldn't be true for one hour, it seems. Does that sound familiar to you? Well, why is that? Well, in between Simon Peter's resolution and his failure, there actually was another failure. We think of his failure publicly, but there first was a failure privately. Immediately after, he said he would never be offended and he would never deny the Lord and he would go with him to death. What do you find Peter doing in the Garden of Gethsemane? You find him sleeping. As a matter of fact, Jesus will come and say to him repeatedly, Could you not watch with me one hour? Peter, could you not watch and pray with me for an hour? You just made such great promises, and yet you failed to watch and pray. I'm convicted by something, and that is that year after year, I determine I'm going to do better in certain areas of my life, and yet so many times I fail. And could it be that the real root of my failure is not in that area, but the real root of my failure is in the matter of prayer? Remember, it was John Rice that said, All of our failures are prayer failures. When we fail to watch and pray, we fail to keep the vital connection that is necessary for us to do what we ought to do. You see, we can't keep these commitments in our own power. We need divine enabling and we need the vital connection with God that comes through watchfulness and through prayer. Watch is a word for the flesh. Flesh must be starved, must be disciplined, it must die. And pray is a word for the Spirit. The Spirit must be nurtured in His presence. And that doesn't just work, work in the upper room with all the other disciples around in a formal prayer meeting. No, it has to happen in the garden when you're tired and when you're sad and when you're struggling and when the real battle is going on everywhere, every day, watching and praying, watching and praying. What were they to watch for in that garden? Were they to watch for Judas? No. They were to keep their eyes on Jesus. We're not watching for the Antichrist. We're not looking out for the evil around us. No, we're keeping our eyes on the Lord Jesus. You see, if we will learn to watch and pray, we will find in that the power we need to keep all the things we've committed to God. Your eyes are on eternity and that changes what you do with every day of your life. I would challenge you to look up sometime Jonathan Edwards' 21 resolutions. When he was a very young man, uh, just, a, just a very young minister, he sat down and he wrote out 21 resolutions. He added to them all through uh, the years that followed, finally when he was done, he had 70 of them, 70 resolutions. Can you imagine? I've spent some time reading through those resolutions of the great preacher Jonathan Edwards and I've observed some things. One thing I observed is that they're more about being than they are about doing. Most of our resolutions are about what we're going to do. Maybe if we gave more attention to being right with God and being with the Lord, we would do the right things. 
Now, something else that I observed about Edwards was that he kept those resolutions in a certain place and he read over them at least once every week so he wouldn't forget them. We're so quick to forget, aren't we? So quickly we move on to the next thing. And so if you're going to resolve certain things, we must be reminded we must not forget. But the great observation I made was this, that one resolution was repeated. It's found multiple times. It's worded differently, but it's essentially the same. And it seems that this one resolution was the one that guided all the rest. And it was this. It was his continual resolution to live every hour as if it would be his last on earth and in the next hour he would see Jesus face to face. Now this is powerful. I think it is at the heart of what Jesus was saying in Matthew 26, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Peter, if you're going to keep your resolve, if you're going to keep your commitment, you're going to have to keep your eyes on me. I'm not suggesting today that you shouldn't make resolutions. I'm suggesting that you should not make them for the new year. You should make them for eternity. You should determine that every day by the grace of God, you're going to keep your heart and your mind fixed on God and God alone. And you're going to move forward for the glory of God. You see, this is what you do on the eve of a new era. You get your eyes back on the Lord. You hit the spiritual reset button, if you will. You watch and you pray. One of my favorite stories in history comes from the journal of the famed explorer Christopher Columbus. Uh, When they discovered it, uh, there was one entry that seemed to fill most days, and it was only three words. There was little adventure or exhilaration in it. It was the simple entry, We Sailed On. Many days, that's exactly what we're supposed to do, to simply sail on. A poet by the name of Miller wrote a poem based on those words and that story about Christopher Columbus, and I'd like to read it to you. He wrote, Behind him lay the great Azores, behind the gate of Hercules. Before him not the ghost of shores, before him only shoreless seas. The good mate said, Now we must pray, for lo, the very stars are gone. Brave Admiral, speak, what shall I say? Why, say, sail on, sail on and on. My men grow mutinous day by day. My men grow ghastly, wan and weak. The stout mate thought of home, a spray. of salt wave washed his swarthy cheek. What shall I say, brave Admiral, say? If we sight naught but seas at dawn, why, You shall say at break of day, sail on, sail on and on. They sailed and sailed as winds might blow until at last the blanched mate said, Why, now not even God would know should I and all my men fall dead. These very winds forget their way, for God from these dead seas is gone. Now speak, brave admiral, speak and say, he said, sail on, sail on and on. They sailed, they sailed, then spake the mate, This mad sea shows his teeth tonight. He curls his lip. He lies in wait with lifted teeth as if to bite. Brave Admiral, say but one good word. What shall we do when hope is gone? The words leapt like a leaping sword. Sail on, sail on and on. May I say to you, dear friend, you may have the shoreless sea in front of you and wonder what is before you. But if by faith you'll sail on, If you'll keep watching and praying, God will help you not only to keep what you've resolved, but to discover all that He has for you. He has so much planned for you in the days ahead. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. By God's grace, sail on. A new start begins with new life in Jesus Christ. If you don't know Him, our prayer is that you will trust Him today as your personal Savior. If you do know Him, realize that each believer should determine to make this year a new beginning of obedience to God. For more resources on walking with Christ, please visit us online at scottpauley.org.